I sold the silver dollar pool hall in 41 and decided I'd take a vacation and go to Hawaii. So uh, that summer, I got a, got a passage on the Lurleen to Hawaii. I don't remember exactly what it cost me for my passage, but I uh, assume it's about a hundred or thereabouts. And uh, it was a five-day trip over back to Hawaii. When I landed there, I guess it was on a Friday, well, I thought uh, I, I would have a, a nice vacation, and I was planning to go to the Big Island in, in, a, in a month or so. Well, it didn't turn out that way. I was, I was walking down the sidewalk, and who would I run into but one person that I worked with up at Boulder Dam. He was also a steel shop and a blacksmith. He says, what in the world are you doing down here? I said, well, I could ask you the same thing. I said, uh, I'm on vacation. He says, well, he says, I'll tell you, your vacation, I think, is finished because I need you to come to work uh, out of Pearl Harbor up at Red Hill. Uh, the Navy would put in some underground tanks and I needed you to come up there and, and be a foreman on the welders. I'm a master mechanic on that job for the Navy. I've been having problems with the natives welding. They just weren't getting the job done. So he says, I need you. The uh, storage tanks that uh, we were building underground were for fuel for the ships. That way, they were underground where they could not be bombed and destroyed. And they were in a hurry to get those tanks completed. And that's why Master Mechanic wanted me there to push those welders and, uh, and get the job done. Well, I worked on those tanks in there from uh, June 41 until the uh, attack on Pearl Harbor. It just so happens that I was on the graveyard ship at that time, and uh, all foremen would change, would come early and uh, relieve the other foreman about 15 minutes earlier, get the uh, lowdown on the job and whatever. And so the uh, way it happened, I, I was out of the tunnel, and uh, on the dump, the day workers still hadn't gone into work and they were milling around there and looking at Pearl Harbor. Well, I walked out there and wondered what in the world uh, they all looking at. They were all pointing and looking and excited. So I looked out there and I could see planes flying over Pearl Harbor and dropping. I couldn't see the bomb drop, but I could see the, uh, the wake on the water or the explosion. Well, that went on for a few minutes. And then the Arizona was hit, and it blew up. And I've never seen anything so, I don't know how you would call it. There were clouds in the air about a thousand feet above the Arizona, and there were flashes within the, those, that cloud. There were flashes like lightning in there. Uh, it, was, it was awful. But then we figured that the Japanese are attacking Pearl Harbor. Well, they attacked for a while longer, and then they left. Well, I didn't see any planes being shot down. We weren't too far away. We were about a mile and a half, I imagine, from Pearl Harbor, up at Red Hill. Now, the first attack was something like at 7.30. Well, when that ended, about 9 or 9.30, I'm not so sure, we watched another attack. There were a bunch of planes, Japanese planes, coming over from their ship, a 16 at a wave. We counted them, and there was quite a few waves of those planes came in. And they flew over. There was a cloud over Pearl Harbor. They got behind the cloud, and they dove right out of the cloud onto Pearl Harbor. They dropped just a lot of torpedoes and bombs, and we watched that. Uh, that attack lasted about, oh, 15 minutes, and they were gone. Oh, some of them went over to, uh, and, and sprayed Hickam Field, 
but I don't remember, I can't remember seeing uh, them after about 9.15 or 9.30. Now, there was uh, five of our family in Honolulu at, at, this, at the time of the bombing. Uh, Mike was in the Air Force, and he was at Heckham Field. Well, he wasn't injured because it was a Sunday morning and he was still at home when the bombing took place. Well, Tom, another brother, was on a destroyer, the, the Cummings. They had gone out of the harbor when the bombing uh, was uh, on, so he didn't get hurt. But I didn't hear about what happened till later. Now, uh, Joe lived in Honolulu. And my sister Z lived there also. So there was five of us in and around Pearl Harbor and Honolulu. About the third day after the bombing, I was worried about my youngest brother there being at, at Hickam Field. So I decided I'd go down there and see if I could uh, find out. I went out and uh, the officers let me in and I went up to the hangar where I, I do what the hangar that he worked out of. And uh, I asked uh, an officer there if uh, Mike was hurt or if he was around or whatever. And he says, I told him that he was my brother. He says, look over there to that tree and you'll see a plane. And he pointed out the direction. And he said, Mike is under that tree working on a plane out there, trying to get it, uh, get it in shape. I didn't get a chance to talk to him or see him, but anyway, I was satisfied that he was okay, and so I left. 